Well, while Deirdre has been going to go look for flowers, we've been finding things of our own and trying to decode a bit of a mystery. Now, it's not uncommon for us to find porcupine quills um, on the road, but what is very uncommon is to find that many porcupine quills on the road. Um, so this is, I just literally drove a loop around Treehouse Dam and this is what I've uncovered. It's every five meters or so, there's another porcupine quill and another one and another one. Um, and they're all, okay, they've all been driven over so they are damaged and showing signs of wear. But I don't think that this porcupine gave up its quills willingly. Um, this is not what you see from porcupines. They don't drop quills like this. I suspect what's happened is this has been killed either by a leopard or maybe even the hyenas themselves. And then the hyenas have, if it was a leopard, stolen it and dragged it back to the den. And these quills were, were dropped during the rains, the night of the rain, which means that all the tracks would have been washed away, so we wouldn't have been able to tell that it had been dragged. Um, and the reason why I say it's been washed during the rain is because I'm going to put them down and show you a few little examples of why I say so. So this one over here is a good one. Let's just push them because they're all falling. And now I'm trying to find another one here that I saw that has a bit of... Ah, there it is. Okay, so if you have a look at this one here, you see this is how this quill was lying, right? It was lying with this top side up. You can see how this side here is all shiny and clean and no sign of anything on it. But if I roll it slightly, you see how there's the sand sticking to it? So that means that this quill was down when the rain was falling because as it was falling, the sand particles were being washed up against it. The quill got wet and they then dried and stuck onto the quill itself. Um, had this been after the rain, these particles wouldn't be sticking to the quill the way that they are at the moment. So that's how we know either during or before the rain that these quills were planted on the ground. The other side of it is, if you take a look at this one, um, you'll see here there's actually a piece of flesh stuck to the end of this quill. So this quill was forcibly removed. Um, it means it was pulled very, very hard um, and bits of the flesh came off. Um, and that flesh still smells, which means that it's within the last few days. It's not something um, that was pulled out um, a while ago. And yes, I did sniff it. Um, one has to do these things sometimes in order to know what's going on. The other thing about porcupines is generally when you find quills on the ground, you find quills that are kind of blunted, they typically looking a bit shabby, um, and it's basically ones that they kind of release and get rid of. This many quills like this, and also all kinds of different types of quills, so you can see what these sturdy back, um, almost these are like the tail quills, um, as well as brand new little quills. Oh no, I'm dropping them all. I'm trying to get this one here. Um, brand new little quills that don't even have their coloration yet, so this is a new one that's growing out. When you start to see all of these um, coming out, plus the long thin ones, then it's almost a, an immediate sign that there has been a porcupine killed in the immediate vicinity and then dragged along the roads and that's why it's over such a big distance at this stage. But a cool thing to, um, to kind of try and figure out and mystery to look um, look for. Uh, Thomas, so yes, predators are nervous of these quills. Um, that's why when you see them hunting them, they actually employ quite an interesting strategy. So hypothetically, if my fist is the quill, is the porcupine, and let's hold on, let's make this a porcupine. Might as well, we've got the time to do it. So we're going to make myself as porcupiney as I can possibly do, um, given my limited capabilities and the fact that I don't have huge amounts of subcutaneous fat in my fingers. Um, other parts maybe, but not on my fingers. Um, so imagine now I'm the porcupine, right? So I'm sitting like this, all of these are out. You can see these are incredibly sharp. You can just ask Trishala, she managed to poke herself with one of these the other day in her arm, and this porcupine was quill was sticking the um, at a 90 degree angle out of your arm. So the predator is hugely aware of these. These can get into the skin, into the eyes, they can cause huge amounts of infection, and there's been quite a number of animals that have succumbed to hunting porcupines. So what they do is, imagine I'm the porcupine, this is my body, this is all my quills. What they do is they erect the quills like you see like this, and they turn 
um, to face the predator as the predator moves around them. What they'll also do is they'll rattle their quills to make an audio sound to try and intimidate that predator. But what the predators do is they will try and use their paws, so I'll, this hand is the paw of a predator, and they'll try to get in underneath and try and flick it. And so what they do is they try to push them over like this, and as soon as the porcupine lands like that, they then grab it by the throat and they're able to kill it and get out of the way of those um, quills. And, and that's how very successful leopard, leopards are able, able to do it. But a lot of them have to learn the hard way, which is by getting a face full of these um, regularly, and it's a pain to get them out. And often, like I say, particularly older leopards can succumb to this. And I wouldn't be surprised, I mean, it's a big call, but I wouldn't be surprised that this is maybe Mulawati is doing. And maybe this is what he feeds off, is things like this. And that's why we very seldom find carcasses for them, because a porcupine is a big meal, but it's not a big meal that gets hoisted all that often. They typically eat it within a day, maybe a day and a half. Um, so it's very, very possible that this was him. Now, the other interesting thing about these porcupine calls, I'm going to drop them all on the ground anyway, because they need to go back into the wild and into the environment, and there's a very good reason for it. I'm going to try and see... Okay, Theo, I don't know if you're going to get this. Let me try and find a gap here where you can maybe... Okay, there we go. If you can focus in, and I'll use another porcupine call to show you, if you focus in at the tip of this porcupine call, do you see that there is an ant inside there? So porcupine quills, even though they are just hair and there's not too much to it, inside there is food that is available for ants. And so when a car, and this is what's happened to this quill, is a car is driven over it, which has caused this quill to crack open, and it's exposed the interior of the quill itself, which the ants can actually feed off. And so they are utilizing these quills, and they're going to break them down until nothing is left. Um, and so that's why it's important to leave them back in the environment because even though it looks like nothing is happening with these and that the predator didn't eat them, there is actually insects that are still making use of this quill and it's still providing nutrients to the entire cycle of animals out here, which is absolutely fascinating.